Hi, it's Richard here from Past That Science. Today we're going to have a quick look at um, electric shock and isolation transformers and how an isolation transformer can reduce the risk of shock. Now, certainly in some environments, certainly where you're going to have handheld equipment in risky environments such as maybe a bathroom or some workplaces, uh, they may supply the electrical equipment via an isolation transformer in order to keep the, uh, the users or the workforce at the minimum risk of shock. So first of all, let's just have a quick look at the path that the current takes in the event of a shock. So when um, someone comes into contact with a live part, what actually happens? Well, certainly in this country, um, the public distribution supply system has a deliberate and intentional connection to Earth. And when I say Earth, I mean it's that general mass of Earth. And that connection is made there at the Earth to neutral point of DNO uh, secondary winding. Now that is then what gives us our line conductor that we know is then at 230 volts and that the neutral will be at or around zero volts. Since that we know that the line conductor is at 230 volts, we know that we need to protect ourselves from it by things like uh, you know, insulation of live parts, barriers and enclosures, placing out of reach and obstacles. So if you happen to come into contact with a live part, the current will flow from that point of contact down through your body and presuming you're stood on the ground, it will then travel down to earth. And it's that current that passes through your body that gives you that shock sensation. And it can also um, interfere with your body's normal bodily function, like your heartbeat and your breathing uh, and your muscles. You may experience muscle spasms, which could then lead to a lot of pain and or injury as your mus muscles go into spasm and you are also at risk of death. So the current actually flows from the point of contact and then it flows down through the body and then out to earth. And it will then find its way through the general mass of earth and find its way eventually back to that earthed neutral point of the transformer secondary winding in the, uh, in the substation, the DNO substation. The current will then pass through the secondary winding and down the line conductor back to the point of contact. So that is the whole path that the current will take. So on the drawing here, we have our earthed system as, as we had before, and we described how the shock would take its path through the general mass of earth and end up back at this earthed neutral point of the um, transformer distribution transformer secondary winding. And it'll go through the winding itself and down the line conductor back to the point of contact. Well, here instead, we're going to use an isolation transformer, such as one that you'll find in a shaver socket. Uh, this transformer is there to provide you with electrical separation. And what that means with the electrical separation, there's no electrical connection between the secondary winding and the earthed primary winding circuit. Right. It's not an electrical connection, it's magnetic, it's mutual inductance because it's a transformer. Now, unlike the earthed system, um, where it's going to try and find its way back to here, the earth neutral point, current that's flowing in that secondary winding is going to find its way back to here because it's across these two points where the actual source of energy is. Now, seeing that this secondary part here has absolutely no connection to earth, then the current cannot find its way through the general mass of Earth back to this point. And since then, there's no path for the current to take, then there's reduced risk of shock. Now, make no mistake that if you were to come into contact with both these, these live parts, you'll get a shock because certainly in the case of a shaver point transformer, there's still 230 volts across these two points. So the shock will take a path down the arm, across the chest, so it'll be affecting the heart and the breathing, back up the other arm and back to this point. So that is the path the current will take should you come into contact with both the live parts. Now it's deemed to be fairly unlikely that you'd come into contact with both of those parts. The likelihood is that maybe if there's a bit of a damage on the flex or something, that you'd come into contact with one of the live parts and the isolation transformer would give you a degree of protection against that shock.
Now the transformer that's going to be used for the purpose of electrical separation, the isolation transformer, can't just be any old transformer. It's actually got to be a transformer that meets the required British standard and the specification. And there's the British standard there. And you should also find uh, on that transformer somewhere, or on the unit anyway, that symbol that's displayed there. Um, that's from BS7671 to denote that it's a transformer that's designed for electrical separation. Find these typically are the shaver points in a bathroom. And maybe if you have a fan in the, that particular zone in the bathroom, that may be a, a fan that would be on a cell supply that is also supplied by an isolation transformer. So then, uh, just to recap, the electricity supply, certainly in this country, has a deliberate and intentional connection to Earth, and by Earth we mean that uh, general mass of Earth on which we live. The shock path, when you receive a shock, it runs through your body, down through to Earth, and then back onto the supply system wherever the point is earthed, and it's usually going to be the earth neutral point of the secondary winding and the distribution transformer. An isolation transformer then essentially removes the earth out of the system, just gives you two live conductors, but there's no connection to earth on that secondary circuit. And for that reason, there's a degree of shock protection because there's no path to any other part of that isolated system. Now go past that science.